Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's going to be perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. If the video game industry had a global crash and all video games stopped being made, we may have a chance to catch up, but that ain't going to happen, so we must press on playing every single game. If you're just now joining us, we have been playing all the releases in 1980 that were released at some point in 1980. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to 1980. And if you have been tuning in and you wonder, wait a second, this is bust out. We've already been playing past the B's in alphabetical order. And you are correct. This is uh, a game that almost got th past the radar and we missed it. This is a launch title for the TRS-80 Color Computer. Thanks to a loyal fan, they told me that this was another release that we have to do before the end of 1980. So thank you so much, L. Curtis Boyle, for that. And then this is bust out or super bust out for the TRS-80 Color Computer. Let's take a look at the artwork. There is the front of Bust Out for the T uh, Radio Shack TRS-80 Color Computer and back of the box. These are reproduction boxes, not the actual scans. I really prefer the actual scans when I can find them, but there's the example of the cartridge for Bust Out and Super Bust Out. Yeah, I've heard there's lots of different options and cool play ways we can play. Uh, let's take a look at the manual for Bust Out or Super Bust Out. There it is, yes, Super Bust Out, the name from the manual. And while it says 1981 here, it was first introduced for the launch of the TRS-80 Color Computer in 1980. Super Bust Out is, of course, a breakout clone, uh, but this one does it a little bit differently. Uh, I, I've only booted it up once uh, just to make sure it would work for this one. And uh, yeah, you can see we got different ways we can play, gravity versus no gravity, playing on the same court or separate courts competing against a computer or playing with partners, and then how you use the joystick, which is very interesting. And then also two-player competition. And then you can see here it's giving, going through the the options of how you select uh, which game you want to play from the beginning. And then uh, what it looks like to play two players and partners on separate courts. So it is a breakout, but this is probably the most ambitious breakout we've seen on the channel thus far. So really glad we get to put this in before we finish 1980. You can see here three players in competition using gravity, so it doesn't just do a normal bounce. It actually is pulling down on the ball and making an arc uh, on the screen, which is pretty cool. And you can see here we got different scoring tables for how it plays. Uh, we'll refer back to the manual if we need to when we boot it up. So here we go. This is Bust Out or Super Bust Out for the TRS-80 computer released at some point in 1980. Not exactly sure... Well, the launch was uh, around June, July, I believe. But uh, here we go. We got to boot it up looking at the disk first. And since this is a bin file, we got to do load, load M. Bust out. You can barely hear it, but they're emulating the disk drive in the background just a little bit. I don't know if you can pick it up because I have it turned down a little bit. Most of these games have been very high pitch beeps. So I don't want anyone's ears to bleed. All right, here we go. So number of players. I am solo, so I'm doing a one-player game. For gravity, yes. I want to see show you everyone what gravity is. It's pretty cool. And then uh, this is just how many lives you have. So we're going to go for the max, 20. So check it out. This is a uh, better than the paddle control we've seen on Atari's uh, 2600 and the home computer. I have full range to move around. And then when the ball comes up, you can see it hits at an arc. And if I don't move, it actually doesn't go any further. So I actually have to bump it up. And when I bump it up, that affects the, <laughs> that affects the speed. So if you hit it hard enough, it's going to continue going past uh, the screen at an alarming rate. So it's actually using the gravity with us. And that was a terrible start for it. <laughs> so just the slightest movement makes it go faster and faster. But the control's really cool that I can... Uh, see, I'm already hitting it too hard. But the control's really cool because I can move around. It's not just using a left and right motion. And the accuracy is really nice. And, of course, you could just say, oh, it's just another breakout clone. But it, th this one does it very well. So the speed picked up just because I did that myself. I'm the one hitting it. <laughs> yeah, sadly, we don't have a guest to do two-player simultaneous. That would be awesome. And it would be crazy and hectic. 
But the, the, the idea that we can move around uh, this way playing the breakout is awesome. But it's essentially, oh, there you go, that's the way to do it. It's essentially still breakout. You're moving, breaking the blocks. Once you break all the blocks, then you move on to the next screen. <laughs> and as always, if you can get to the top of the screen, that's the way to go. Let's see if we can smash this up there. <laughs> and when you hit it too, too fast, then it ends up pick, uh, uh, following suit and going really, really fast over and over again. So I, after this, this should be all the releases of the TRS-80 Coco uh, in 1980. It's going to really pick off a little bit more in 1981, but um, uh, this will complete all the launches or the launch releases. And with that, that's a good taste of Bust Out. And for the time, that is above average. I know it's just a breakout clone, but it does a lot more uh, than the usual breakout clone. I don't know if I can go as high as four stars considering everything else we've seen on the computer space. The physics is very, very good. We played another pinball game for the TRS-80 Coco, and the physics was, was not as sharp. They didn't have the ability to build your own pinball, which was pretty cool. But I'm going to go for uh, three and a half stars for Bust Out, above average for everything else we've played at the time. Very well done. So after that, let's go back to the last game we played. So we're blazing through. We last left off with Space Invaders for the Atari home computer. There it is. A very good port. Not as good as the 2600. And what's interesting is the, the Atari home computer has more power to it. Hardware was much more advanced than 2600, but the 2600 was, was better than this one. And after this Space Invaders, we're going to continue chronologically. Our next game is Space Invaders Deluxe. Another Space Invaders. A new release. I don't know if it's that much more new, but let's take a look at the artwork for Space Invaders Deluxe. So it looks like just a clone of Space Invaders Part 2. Deluxe must have been distributed by Midway. There's the advertisement flyer for it with an example of the arcade cabinet. Midway, and uh, they've been around in the arcade scene for a very, very long time. This is the early part of Midway branching into the video game world. And there's the example of the arcade cabinet. You can see the Space Invaders Deluxe. This is the Midway arcade cabinet. There's our PCB, and the control panel is, like all shooters, left, right, and fire. Love the control panel, though. Makes us look like we're in a spaceship. Excellent. Yeah, there's our controls, and there's the ar ar arcade marquee for Space Invaders Deluxe. By the way, at this point, we've already seen Space Invaders 2. We've already seen Super Space Inv So we've already seen lots of different Space Invaders and then clones of Space Invaders. So I don't know if there's, there, there's anything different or really revolutionary about this one compared to the other clones we had. Looks like this one's, yeah, it's, it's a clone of Part 2, which we've already seen. And I bet the manual, yeah, the manual's going to be Part 2 as well. So let's step up and see what Space Invaders Deluxe is like in the arcades. Developed by Taito, published by Midway. Oh, there it is. We got everything, including the control panel at the bottom. That's awesome. Marquee at the top, all the artwork at the side. Gotta love the artwork, though. And uh, it's kind of hard to see. We have instructions on the control panel, and then right above that is the point score for the ship. So that's awesome. I'm going to leave it on this screen just a little bit longer and go ahead and put a coin in and push and start. Let's hear that thump. The Space Invaders thump. Where is it? There it is. Oh, yeah. So we played lots of different shooters. We've seen the evolution change from Space Invaders to Galaxian to Mooncresta and then several other variations on the channel so far. So going back to pretty much the same game as Space Invaders isn't really doing much. Uh, this essentially is the same or pretty close to the same game we played in 1978 when it was released. But yeah, there it is. It's Space Invaders. Classic. This is two years old, so would they consider this retro back in 1980? Uh, I'm not sure. Because <laughs> if you think of all the other space shooters that are available in the arcades right now, somebody playing this, would they be considered old school? That they're wanting to play Space Invaders or pretty close to Space Invaders? Okay, so this was the North American release I saw in chat. And that makes sense with Midway being the distributor. Yeah, but this plays great, just like we'd expect from Space Invaders. Can't believe I missed the UFO! No! 
I'm not as focusing as much because it's very similar to what we've seen. I, I don't want to say downgrade, but we've seen so many better evolutions of Space Invaders in the last two years. Let's see if we can at least get a win before we go. This is where it gets pretty intense. Hear that thump in the background? Man, it gets your heart going. <laughs> and an explosion. At this point, we've had video games after Space Invaders that... Um, have now added like a ditty or music that you play. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and we saw that in Space Invaders Part 2 as well. All right, so that is all we're we'll do for a taste of Space Invaders Deluxe. For the time, out of five stars, I'm not really going to go as high on this one. I could almost go, this is average uh, for an arcade game that you play at the time uh, in 1980. But um, ha having not been there in 1980 in the arcades, would this have been considered just an, uh, an average arcade game? Or would this be below average two years after the release of the original Space Invaders? We'll keep it at three for now. So three stars for Space Invaders Deluxe in the arcades. All right, so let's move on to our next game. And yes, there you go. It's Space Invaders 2, not Space Invaders Part 2. This is a different variation of Space Invaders. Let's take a look there for Space Invaders Part 2. Probably using the same cabinet as Space Invaders Deluxe. That's a very good point. In the chat, they said how the aliens didn't match up the other ones. And it's, it's when you have clones or copies of games, all they're doing is essentially hacking the, 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 the game. So they're just making little variations to the, the pixel art sometimes. And that's actually how we get uh, Miss Pac-Man. I really wish I could get a copy of Evil Auto because, uh, or not Evil Auto, uh, Crazy Auto, because that was the hack they did off of Pac-Man, and it added legs to Pac-Man and runs around. But then that hack ended up uh, being what they ended up ha hacking to turn into Miss Pac-Man later, which is a much better hack. You know, more levels, mazes, things like that. So this is a different arcade. Oh, we got a joystick that controls. It's still moving only left and right. You can see the joystick controls. It's a two-way joystick with the button for fire. Yep, Space Invaders 2. So it looks like this is uh, Bally Midways. Interesting. So a black and white game, most likely using plexiglass overlay. We have a manual. So yeah, Space Invaders 2. There's the example of the co uh, cocktail cabinet. And we won't go through these instructions because it's Space Invaders. We, we, we kind of got the idea for it. All right, here we go. We're stepping up the arcade. This is Space Invaders 2. De uh, developed by Midway, really? Okay, so it looks like they may have de uh, developed this from the ground up, uh, obviously copying, but um, this is the cocktail cabinet, so it's two pl ways you can play, or two people can play, one on either side of the ca uh, co cocktail cabinet, and then it's able to flip back and forth. Let's see if we have diff different artwork for this one, besides just the cocktail. Is that it? Okay, we got the zoomed-in uh, color overlay. This would use plexiglass to make the color, so it's not programmed that way. If you look at the colors, you're like, wow, it's fading into green and blue. No, and it's 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 not programmed that way. All right, so we'll keep the cocktail going and put a quarter in. Looks like, well, let's do two-player just to see if it uses two controllers. And then after our two coins are in, let's push start and play some Space Invaders. So this is it. Yes, this plays different. And different art, uh, artwork on the aliens. I'm going to take control of the other controller. Yeah, nothing's happening on the other side, so it's alternating play. It's going to flip the screen when it's time for the other person to play. And that's typical for the time. Very rarely do we get a simultaneous play arcade game, but that's the way to do it. They're going to catch on and realize that's where you get the money. Having two quarters can go in at once. All right, so if you look here, the there's a ship at the top that's going against me, and I really thought that'd be the second player. So we put it we put enough money in for two players, but the it's just a computer character that's shooting extra shots at us. So a small variation of Space Invaders, but not enough to really push the shooter to new boundaries, considering what we've seen with Galaxian and uh Moon Cresta. <laughs> now let's see if it flips. So it should be on the other side now for the second player. Let's see. I'll say one more coin. Now let's try if we push. Does this work both sides? Yes, okay, it does. I just didn't put enough money in. So now we have two players that can play at the same time. So this is the first simultaneous arcade Space Invaders we played. Oh, and the other player is already dead. But you can see I'm, I'm, I'm manning both joysticks at the same time as you can see. We're both able to move back and forth on the screen and cooperatively work to knock the Space Invaders out. 
So for all those nerds that invited uh, their uh, girls to the cocktail cabinet to play some Space Invaders co-op, props to the girl that actually stayed with that guy. And you can see the UFOs coming down the middle. So great idea, but it's not something original. Mid uh, Midway, this is their, um, uh, apparently their development for it, but Atari already did this. We already have co-op Space Invaders at home on the 2600. Yeah, they didn't have a variation like this on the 2600, where the, you're on either side, but uh, it's still the same idea, uh, where you're working together to kill all the Space Invaders. But I dig it. That's pretty That's pretty fun. So Space Invaders 2, uh, so for the time, we were saying just uh, any Space Invaders game is average. Uh, this one is still about the same uh, typical for what we've seen at the time. I'll bump it up just because of the two-player mode, uh, but I, I wouldn't even want to go half a star it'd be like a quarter star but we'll do three and a half for space invaders 2 trying something different just a little bit different all right so after space invaders 2 what is our next game next we got space laser and we've seen another variation of this game in the arcades earlier as well let's take a look at the artwork for space laser this is by taito a laser duel in space with both kind of arcade cabinets, upright and cocktail, with some examples of screenshots. Interesting, Taito did this one because I think the other one we had was developed by someone else, but then distributed by another company. There's the example of the arcade uh, cocktail cabinet. And then for controls, this is left, right, and fire, but not what you'd expect. Uh, it's a black and white game. I don't even think we get uh, overlay on this one. For different versions, and we did play one other version. This is also called Astro Laser, Space War, and Space War by two different companies. So uh, it, th th this is the s we're playing Space Laser, but there's lots of different variations that it that it could be. All right, here we go. This is Space Laser, released sometime in 1980 by Taito. And this is totally a fixed shooter. Looks like we're playing Space Laser on a cocktail cabinet, which is nice. I love that we have more releases by Taito, and it's great seeing these video game companies right in the beginning. We've seen some early SNK games when uh, they're still going by their, their Japanese moniker. And so it's it's awesome seeing the beginning of these companies, especially Nintendo. That, that's been pretty cool too. Okay, so let's put a coin in and push start. It looks like they do have an overlay on this one. The last one we played was straight black and white. <laughs> and I've already died. At, at the top of the screen, there is a, a ship that's going against us. And you're essentially trying to get as many ships as you can and kill them. And I think we could, could we get that... We can get the other ship at the end, but it's really difficult because their shot goes all the way to, to the bottom. And you, you want to have the other ships used as a shield. But very simple concept. You can see that the... Oh, mine isn't even going all the way to the end. Because if you look at the top, it says fuel. You have to wait till your fuel is maxed out. And when it is, then you can shoot your laser far enough. Because every time you shoot, it ends up going down. I'm only getting like little bursts here and there. So if we uh, crank it up, I bet we can shoot the ship at the end, but he'll just end up coming back. Let's see if we can get a shot at him. There we <laughs> Oh, it just reset. So we did get him. Uh, we got one on him and he's got eight on us. Yeah, I'm loving seeing this evolution of the shooter genre. Any shooters, shooter fans out there, if you played any uh, bullet hell shooters or you just love scrolling shooters, this is the beginning. I'm really big on the history of this, and uh, like we say, chronologically gaming isn't partial to one genre. We love them all. Uh, it does get a little tight when it comes to gambling or casino. Uh, uh, we're kind of been breezing over those. All right, so that was Space Laser. For the time, that's pretty typical. Uh, it was only programmed in black and white, um, and I, I don't even know if I can go three stars for that because it's a little more clunky than the other shooters we played. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so this is the beginning, and I love it when we get a shooter that is starting to scroll. So I don't know if you saw the episode where we played a game on the Apple II that was programmed by Nasir Gabelli. He had a scrolling shooter that you were playing on the Apple II. It was crazy. to play. It was something better than the arcades. All right, so let's do two and a half stars for Space Laser in the arcade. And after that, let's see what our next game is. After Space Laser, what could it be? This is Space Zap. If you're just joining us, we're playing all the games released in 1980 in alphabetical order because we don't know the exact release date for, for these. Let's take a look at the artwork for Space Zap. That is awesome. This is uh, Midway's advertising flyer. And there's all the different cabinets. We got Cabaret, Upright, and then Cocktail all at the top. Midway's new Space Zap. 
Oh, and there they are again, the three cocktail or the three cabinet types. There's our PCB. And then for control panel, looks like we have, interesting, we have one fire button and then four buttons for aiming. So I guess we hold down the aim. Interesting that it's not a directional pad. We're used to seeing like Nintendo or Sega or something having a, a, a D-pad there, but they're using buttons instead. Interesting. All right, here we go. Space zap. Yeah, controls, uh, you move, they're, they're mapping them to the joystick for me. So, But on the control panel, you would use the buttons. You'd hold the button down for up and then fire for uh, up. There's our arcade marquee. Space zap, an example of the screenshot. Very cool graphics. Now, we're seeing slight variations in the arcade of pushing the technology for graphic-wise. I know when we came to Crazy Climber, I didn't give it like a, a five-star rating, but Crazy Climber was one of the first games to start pushing graphics in the arcades, and this one's doing that as well. All right, so no manual on this one. All right, let's step right up to Space Zap, released by Midway in the arcades at some point in 1980. Oh, excellent. So we got the overlay of what you would see in the arcades. This is awesome. So um, it did have color. It was programmed in color, but the uh, overlay adds this hue that makes it look like it's um, a blending in as a, a gradient on the background, which is awesome. And uh, we're just checking out the attract mode for a little bit. If you look down at the bottom, it's showing us points and uh, how to do th I love how they give us a control panel that says, insert the coin. Here's your instructions. Enter the coin, press one or two players, and that's pretty much every arcade game. But it says you got to aim the laser, then fire the laser, and uh, the different points for the space mine, alien ship, and then the attack satellite. Here we go. Let's put a quarter in. Oh, yeah, I'm excited for this one. All right, this is Space Zap. For one or two player, two players, most likely alternating controls. Let's go. Push and start. All right, so the way this works is I have... Oh, it looks like my control is different. Let me... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. That was awesome. Best explosion we've seen thus far. Let me double check my controls because it's not doing what I thought it would. Okay, it looks like... Yeah, it is different. Gotcha. Okay, we'll, we're going to control this one different to make sure we can get it to work. There we go. All right, so the way this is played is you're pushing the buttons on the control panel, and then you're trying to hit the ships before they shoot us. It's almost like a, a quick Twitch style game. Um, almost like we're playing Electronic Simon and so forth. So you can see now we're getting bullets coming at us and you want to make sure you knock the bullets out. And so you start mashing the directions before it gets to the center. Oh man, yeah, this is great. Sounds great. Game concept is something new. We haven't seen anything like this. And it easily can be programmed on the 2600, and I think we've see, we're going to see a copy of it later. But this is fresh. This is a new idea. Unless you want to think of it as, um, uh, you know, you're pushing buttons like a, a memory game. And if you wanted to, you can almost think of it like a Game & Watch handheld. <laughs> you're just having to make sure you keep the, keep the game going and picking your timing correctly. Because you can just mash that fire button and then get the directions going. Yeah, and you get in a really good groove. It's it's great. All right, now what I'm waiting for is... Okay, I guess that is the last one. The attack satellite is the last type of enemy on the game. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Now I kind of want to see the explosion at the end because it does it so well. <laughs> And I just saw in the chat, sound effects are similar to Wizard of War, which I think that's 1980. So if we're going in alphabetical order, we should see Wizard of War when we get to the end. Very similar, at least. Yeah, this is Midway. Um, it said it was developed by Midway. And that would be probably only the third developed Midway title we've seen on the channel. So you can see it just gets crazy and hectic, faster and faster. Excellent idea for an arcade game. Plays so well, too. <laughs> and I love that we got the uh, the, over, the the color overlay and all the... <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, 
Oh man, okay, that is the best explosion we've seen on the channel so far. Oh man, yeah, the sound effects too are fantastic. <laughs> so new game concept, excellent sound effects, game control is fantastic. Uh, oh yeah, this is, this is great. So this was Space Zap, released in the arcades, and for that, we gotta go full five stars for Space Zap. That is uh, addictive, fun to play, excellent. So five stars for Space Zap. That's what we're talking about. All right, so after Space Zap, what could possibly play next? All right, so this is Star Castle. This is a new release by Cinematronics, which was what we first saw playing vector-based graphics. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the artwork for Star Castle. Cinematronics gives you more chapter in history of high-earning hits. Yes, they do. So, uh, Cinematronics pushing those vector-based graphics. Those were the winners in the arcade. Part of what made the golden age of arcades the golden age. There's the example of the arcade cabinet for Star Castle. This one is a different take on the arcade game. I have heard of this. I haven't played it myself. So this will be the first try with this one. There's the PCB. It looks like for controls, we just have buttons for left and right and then thrust and fire, similar to Asteroids. <laughs> oh, good. We may be able to see that one later as well. All right, so there's our controls. And then for uh, Arcade Marquee with instructions, insert coins, press start, one or two players, and then uh, the different rings have different points. Hitting the center cannon gets you an extra ship. That's pretty cool. And there's the example of the screenshots. Oh, yeah, we better get that overlay because at this point, this is, I think, still black and white vector graphics. All right, here's our manual for Star Castle. Great uh, artwork, excellent uh, design on that. And let's see if we get any information about the game itself. Cinematronics, operation manual, Yes, 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 we know. Warranty, give us what this game is. What is Star Castle? Introduction. Intra introduction to Star Castle. Star Castle is a one or two player outer space action game designed with features geared for maximum player appeal. Progressively difficult competitive level and a clearly defined enemy which must be both attacked and avoided at various points in the course of play. Center of the playfield play is occupied by the Star Castle, which is programmed to constantly home in on the player's ships. Surrounding the Star Castle are three concentric energy rings of 12 segments, each which serve as both a protective perimeter for the Star Castle and a source of points for the player. Contained within the energy rings are three protective mines, which seek out the player's ships and destroy them upon collision. The movements of the mines are programmed to simulate actions of heat-seeking missiles. That's nice. Object of the game of Star Castle is to score a maximum number of points possible. Well, duh. That's everything in the arcades. Score a maximum number of points possible. This is accomplished by three different elements. Exploding the, exploding the ring segments or the Star Castle in the middle and avoiding the Star Castle's mines. A player's turns over when their ship has been destroyed. And there's the example of points. So uh, is there different game modes? Looks like this is the... A one-player game mode, and we have a two-player. Okay, it's alternating play. It looks like we're not playing at the same time. That's too bad. This would be co cool to play with two players. And then it looks like, yeah, it's telling you how to get maximum score in the manual. So that's pretty nice. So for different versions, we have uh, a version by a different company, a prototype, and then an older version. We're going to play the, the first release of Star Castle, released by Cinematronics at some point in 1980. Very excited for this one. Oh, nice. We got all the artwork surrounding the entire cabinet. And it's kind of hard to see because the, the they're showing everything around the outside. One quarter, one player. And it's a little difficult to see from here. I'm going to zoom it in so you can see the graphics. But it's using an overlay with um, uh, showing the, the rings and changing the color. So the, the red ring, orange ring, yellow ring. And then the center is where the star castle is. That's the one that's shining on us. So let's do a little bit from this view. Let's put a coin in and push and start. So I can see I'm, I'm controlling a ship on the outside. Oh, wow. The control is fast. So it is wrapping the screen for me. And as the ship, I have... I have my shots I can make. And you see it's, it's breaking down the barrier on the outside. The ship controls a lot like Asteroids. Which, by the way, was developed by Atari as a vector-based game. In response to Cinematronics Vector games. 
and you just blow away the barrier on the outside. It has like defenses that come at you, homing missiles. And I'm sitting pretty right here in this spot, but you essentially can shoot all these shots off, knocking the barrier away, trying to get to the center, and eventually you knock them down. Oh, wow. <laughs> if the star castle, I guess, points at you long enough, then you get blasted. You can see it aiming at me. Yeah, looks like it's... it's. So you got to keep yourself moving. But man, you can move. This ship can fly. <laughs> They're getting better and better with the sound effects for explosions and the way the explosions look. Man, I love it. Oh, there you go. As I, as I fly in close, you can see the plexiglass overlay. My ship turns red, just like it was for the red rings. All right, let's keep ourselves moving. That Star Castle is going to blow us up. <laughs> Game over. All right, let's zoom in just a little bit. This one is a little hard to see. The plexiglass overlay makes it really, really dark. Okay, there we go. So we zoomed in, got a bit of the extra artwork around the outside. Let's put a coin in and push and start. Here we go. We can see our bullets a little bit better, but the explosions make it look pretty cool. I don't know why, but the graphics in the middle kind of remind me of the colors and look of... Oh, gosh. I can't believe I avoided that one. Uh, the colors and look of Tempest. But we haven't got... <laughs> yeah, as you get more and more shields down, then the Star Castle is going to fire more and more at you. Let's see if we can get him fast enough. Oh, wow. Yeah. And if you hit the shield, your ship gets tr uh, thrown off course. All right, here we go. Last ship. <laughs> it targeted me so fast. Oh, man. All right, so put another coin in, and let's put two in this time. Let's see if the two-player... Yeah, it looks like two-player is alternating play. They allow you to move really, really fast, though. So, essentially, I bet I could fly across, and then as I'm passing, then make some shots at him. Yeah, the only thing I've seen... Oh, yeah, there we go. Get out of the way of the ship. I can fire, it looks like, three bullets before I can repeat again, which is nice. These games are so good by Cinematronics, it makes you think that, oh, all vector-based games are easy to program for. Or anybody could make the, the uh, a game on vector-based graphics good, because... We haven't seen any bad vector-based games. Everything's been excellent. All right, let's see if we can blow up the Star Castle in the middle. It keeps getting the best of me. And it looks like... <laughs> it gets deflected off the shield. Nice. And it looks like it's regenerating. Yeah, it's, it's adding more. You gotta be really, really quick to get in there and, and destroy it. <laughs> oh yeah this one's not letting me go it's, it keeps regenerating <laughs> two ships left yeah it, it, you have to be really really quick but even close range the shields aren't breaking down fast enough oh and then of course I'm not paying attention to the homing missile that time Got to get all the red down. Yeah, it's going to continue to regenerate. And I'm sure we could go in the back of the arcade cabinet, flip some dip, dip switches and make it a little easier. But still really fun. Yeah, that's pretty great. That is Star Castle by Cinematronics in the arcade. And that's another one I could keep playing even more. It's, it's excellent. Oh, you have to leave one. I see. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So you, you can't take the whole thing away. It'll just bring it, the, 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 it right back again. Gotcha. All right, so for this game, this is excellent. Um, for the time, considering every other game we've played, it is playing on a single screen. So I don't know if I'm going to go as high as five. Four and a half, though, would be ideal. Um, it's using similar controls to Asteroids. But um, the game mechanic's interesting with the shield in the middle. We've seen one other game do this, so um, I can't give it a, a, the uniqueness of it. 
Uh, we'll go four and a half stars. Still an excellent, excellent game for the time. So Star Castle, four and a half stars. What could be our next game after Star Castle? All right, this is Star Quest Rescue at Rigel for the TRS-80. And we tried this earlier on the Apple II, but it was a, it's a bad copy of the game. Still haven't been able to get a redemption on that one, but we can play the TRS-80 version, possibly. Let's cross all fingers and toes. Here is the, looks like the advertisement flyer for Rescue at Rigel with all the other releases by automated sim simulations here. We can see there's Temple of Apshai and then Hellfire Warrior as well. And there's just a screenshot. And that's it. That's all we have for artwork for this one. But we do have the manual. Star Quest Rescue at Rigel. This one is... This one looks like it's a manual for... Okay, it is. This is the manual for the TRS-80. Copyright 1980. Awesome. All right, so for the incurably impatient, do you want to read the summary on the first page and go directly to how to play or skip down to commands? This will allow you to play the game promptly, if not well. <laughs> Those in less of a hurry will want to read how to play, the game situation, the aliens, and so forth. And so we, we have lore for this one with the introduction. And it looks like after introduction, we want to go to how to play. But you can see this is Star Quest. This is the first one in a series. Rescue at Rigel. It's very similar to the other Dungeon Quest series. Uh, Temple of Apshai and Hellfire Warrior is what we played. And then... Um, oh yeah, and they have Ming the Merciless as the enemy for this one. If you prefer lightsabers or to broadswords and blaster bolts to fireballs, then you want to play this one. Instead of the high fantasy role-playing game like in Dungeon Quest, this one is science fiction. So the saga of Sudden Smith, which we won't get into now, but yes, we got the lore for this. We're, we're back in the home computer space. Here's the game situation. What the object is, in Rescue at Rigel, you take part in the Sudden Smith, which is the character we play. A human adventurer teleported down by a transporter beam inside a six-floor, 60-room complex inhabited by an alien race, the Tola. And we're supposed to destroy them. So this is a role-playing game that is not high fantasy. And I'm trying to think now, on the channel, have we played role-playing games that were not high fantasy? Because of Calabeth, high fantasy, uh, Apshai, and Dungeon. You know, everything else has been a dungeon crawl from Dungeons, like, like taken from the Dungeons & Dragons trope. This would be the very first science fiction role-playing game that we played on the show. I guess we would have played the Apple II version, but uh, since that one didn't load, it, it, this is the same experience. All right, so uh, let's see, equipment, and then we want to go to how to play. There we go. If you play Dungeon Quest, uh, rules are similar. Uh, the graphics, <laughs> not the artwork. So levels of play, uh, you keep right, right, uh, Rescue at Rigel challenging by uh, level one's the easiest, level three's the hardest. And then uh, you pick the level of difficulty you want. Oh, there's a score in this one. That's funny for a role-playing game. I guess it's 1980. Scoring's still what you got to have. Base score multiplied by the degree of di difficulty you play in. All prisoners, we're supposed to rescue them. Enter and exiting the alien complex. When you begin play, you'll be in a vestibule, a small room at the top of the complex, just beneath the surface of the asteroid. From that point, you're free to explore as you wish. To leave the Tola base, you must get to your ship to beam you back aboard. This can be done in two ways. The easiest is to use the T command. Oh, uh, we have a command page. We played other games on the Apple II and other computer games. And we couldn't get very far because we don't have a manual. And this is why. The manual actually tells you which commands you can type. So this is great. We can actually get somewhere. So there you go. That's an example of the play field. It's showing us uh, the screen, which is going to be just black and whites on the TRS-80. And it's going to have commands that you type in and then a, a user interface on the right side. So over there, it shows us uh, the room we're currently in. And then if we're wounded or not wounded. And then if we have fatigue. And then it shows us our amble system, like how much we can move. And then it, uh, it displays messages of how far we are in, in combat. Uh, for the role-playing experience, it's still going to be text only. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the display is going to show a picture of the room and show us our stats, physical condition, and so forth. So we'll see that. And that's typical for the uh, role-playing games at the time. There we go. So movement commands. Here we go. All 16 commands are available for you to maneuver your character. As a visual aid, the computer will briefly display in the lower right-hand corner of the screen the letter command you entered. And they did that in uh, Temple of Apshai and the other Dungeon Quest games. 
Uh, yeah, I hope not. Uh, if it if it is, we better buy a lot of food. <laughs> so here's our commands to move forward. You choose one through nine to move one to nine feet, and then shift to dodge. Uh, right to turn right, left to turn left, V to turn around. Yeah, we're definitely referring back to this command sheet when we play. You have a B for blaster, firepower, and then you have the explosive. It shows you how movement works, combat, how th those work. So you really have to invest a lot of time in the manuals to play games at this time. So we'll refer back to that. The, the big question is, does it load? We got the manual. That's the first step. Now the second step. This is StarQuest Rescue at Rigel for the TRS-80. Not the color computer, by the way. All right, so this will be keyboard only. Uh, let's see if we can get it to run. What's on our disc? Looks like we'll play... Oh, we got Rescue and Rigel. Oh, great. It's possible this one may not load. Let's see if we try Rescue. Does Rescue load? No, it is not. What about Rigel? No, it doesn't load either. All right, what about uh, Chain? Rescue. Does it load? We've never let loaded a BLD file before, and... Oh, nope, something's going. It has a syntax error, though. Yes, we are so far away from WSAD, it's not even funny. But it worked! Oh my gosh, we got a title screen to load. This is great. Okay, so what level of difficulty do you want? We're going to go with one, because this is a, a very difficult uh, role-playing game. You cannot play without protecting memory. See special instructions. Break in 1100. No! So it needed to have a certain memory address. Uh, it was a BLD file, and yes, it looks like the game, <laughs> the, the game is cursed. So sadly, we don't get to see... Uh, Rescue at Rigel again. Man, some of these games are so difficult to get to run correctly. Well, it's especially on a live show when we're wanting to react to the game for the first time. But most likely we'll have redemption for this one before we end out 1980. So uh, in the meantime, this one is still a high-ranking game. We're going to go four stars for now, considering what we've seen with Hellfire Warrior and Temple of Apshai. Love to have checked it out and possibly will later. After StarQuest, Rescue at Rigel. What could be our next game? This is Steel Worker in the arcade. Let's take a look at the artwork for Steel Worker. There you go, the advertisement flyer. This is by Taito. A game of strategy in the arcade, it says. There's our cocktail and upright cabinet. Very fun with the cartoon graphics or on the advertisement flyer. Taito's usually, let's, let's get down to business and have some awesome shooters. So this is showing us how to play. It looks like you connect to win. And then if you connect to get someone to uh, walk across, you, you did it. Congratulations. But if they fall down, you're going to lose one of your workers. So this is interesting. Uh, I would even say, is this like Lemmings? You're having to guide people across? Here's our arcade cabinet for Steel Worker. And for controls, it looks like we just got left, right, select, and reversed. So this is a unique arcade game. This is not something we've seen before. There's the example of the screenshot. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Okay, do we have a manual? No, we don't. This is one we really could use one, but um, it looks like it's gonna guide us through. We'll check out the attract mode and see. Oh yeah, we gotta have that wood panel. It's still uh, 1980. Gotta have the wood, wood paneling. All right, here we go. This is Steel Worker in the arcade, released at some point in 1980 by Taito. All right, so let's see what the attract mode's like. It looks like they're picking different <laughs> picking different options at the bottom, and then we have a worker who's aimlessly walking across. I don't believe this. Is, is this really a Lemmings uh, game before Lemmings came out? For a big video gamer and historian, it's, it's crazy how many games on the channel I, I thought were the first one to have the, the idea, but no, we're, we're, we're seeing so many... That, that are doing it first. Yes, it, they're, they're, it's a guy walking aimlessly, and you got to lead him to the other side. I don't believe it. It's not Lemmings, but it's it's the same game idea. All right, let's see what happens if to play it. Putting a quarter in, and pushing start. 
There we go. So player one, uh, I didn't try for multiple coins. We'll try that for the next one. Oh yeah, I should probably see what my controls are. Let's go uh, left, right. We got uh, A and B and then, oh, so, so it looks like you have, <laughs> I'm already losing, losing my guy. So you make a selection down at the bottom. So all I'm doing with the joystick on the arcade cabinet, I'm, I'm just playing around to uh, get you used to how the game is, is run. And that's all you can do is down at the bottom, you pick one option. But how do I get it to go up to the top? <laughs> he drops up the other side. Game over. For trying something unique, having the player having to figure this out is uh, it's kind of tricky. Okay, so pressing one player again. Player one's going. Uh, okay, so there we go. As he walks across, he's making it at the end. So I all I got to do is push one button, and then he's continue, and then he walks and builds it. So if I do, for example, this one, he's going to make a diagonal when he gets to the edge, and then another diagonal when he gets to the edge. Okay, and then it matches up to that one, and then I want to have him go up. There we go. And then go across. Got it. And then across. So you can see the flashing means as soon as he gets to the edge, it'll build the next one. And then he made it to the other side and he does a little dance. <laughs> Not a whole lot of sound effects, but yes, I can't believe this. This is a puzzle game to play. Oh, I don't think I'll make it. Nope. Because you got to be able to get to the diagram on the right side. And there's also like a two different diagonal one that zigzags it. Let's try that. What does that do? Oh, cool. And then he can go that way. <laughs> and then can I zigzag back up? No. Uh, <laughs> he just falls off the side. Okay, it's so cool. This is this is big brain thinking for 1980. I can't believe it's basically Lemmings, uh, but way before. Yeah, this is this is crazy. So this is Steel Worker. Uh, let's uh, put some coins in. Let's see what happens if we try two players. Just to see if it's controlled with two people at the same time. And it looks like, no, it's just alternating play. So here we go. We're going to try another shot. Going down. Yep. And you make it ma match the one in the middle. And then once you start walking, that's the only time you can make a decision. So once he's walking on the next one. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't fast enough. You can't make a decision when he hasn't got to the, the, the plank you're on. So it's, it's a last minute pick. Yeah, you can see here we're trying to pick the right one. I don't think we're going to get that. Nope. Oh, we did we get it? Is he going to go across? He is. Oh my gosh, I don't believe it. <laughs> and we'll go again. So as soon as he's walking on the place you're supposed to, then you can make your next selection. So you got to be fast. Oh, nice. So there's a port on the ZX Spectrum. Awesome. Which doesn't exist yet. Uh, there is no uh, ZX Spectrum at this point. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Go across. Quick, 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 quick. Yeah, this is cool. It's it's funny, too. It has the same graphics as the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> it's like we're playing on a blown up one, but this is in the arcades. Crazy. Yeah, right? It, it's the arcades. Couldn't they have assigned a big control panel where you could select all the buttons there? So a little crazy, but I can understand and see how it works. What? I didn't see how I fell that time. Oh, I hit the uh, one of the girders that was holding things up on the railing. Yeah, this is awesome. So far on the channel, we've seen only one other game I could maybe classify as a puzzle game. It looks like, oh, it's going to work. I don't believe it. Yes. It was an arcade game that had a, a number pad on the control panel like a, the, the, the telephone number pad. That was the only other game I could think of to be classified as a puzzle game that we played thus far. You can't consider those breakout clones to be puzzle games. Oh, is that the drop off? Oh, it is. It has to make sure they connect every single time. All right, so this is pretty cool. I can't believe this is here. Awesome, love it. It's not really pushing anything big with graphics. Uh, it is something new with gameplay. Um, and it is true that there it is an arcade game trying to get your money. So the controls to select all the different options in a quick amount of time 
could have been easier and they may have chose th chose this way to, to, to make sure people die and you also notice the guy that was walking across would speed up really fast and you'd have to make a decision like lightning fast at that point but uh still i give it props and because i didn't know this existed and it's a totally different range of video game funny that it's in the arcades too steel worker was first in the arcade i i want to go high enough because when we finish this year we're going to do a best of 1980 and it's going to be all the games that are relate, rated four and a half stars or five stars and i really want this to be one of the highlights when we check out the end of 1980 so i want to go four and a half stars for steel worker just because of the originality graphics wise it's not going to do anything music but um uh the, the way it plays is, is 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 good enough for the arcades and the idea of it too so we'll go four and a half stars for steel worker that is excellent for 1980. okay so after that steel worker our next game is stone sling for the phillips video pack looks like another artillery style game and keep in mind we haven't even seen the game artillery yet <laughs> We've seen a couple on the Atari 2600. This is possibly another one. Let's take a look at the artwork for Stone Sling. This is cart number 20. This is the European version of the Philips, uh, sorry, the Magnavox Odyssey 2. Love the artwork, that's awesome. And there's a screenshot for us. It's gotta be an artillery based game is my guess. So manual says it's also called Smithereens which might be the Magnavox Odyssey 2 version. This one is the one that came out first. Or wait, this is Stone Sling? Yeah, yeah, we would have already seen it. So it looks like Magnavox Odyssey 2 is next year, which is so funny because the Phyllis Video Pack first came out in Europe and then was released in North America as the Odyssey 2. So it was in Europe first, believe it or not. All right, so you've arrived in the days of old when knights were bold. Football has yet to be invented and castle crumbling is one of the most popular national sports. The left hand control activates the joystick in any direction and release it. The longer you hold it back, the further the boulder will travel. If you hit your opponent's catapult, they'll move out of range to make the necessary repairs. You should make the most of this opportunity to intensify your bombardment. Oh man, this is awesome. It's like Rampart before Rampart came out. And I know we keep comparing video games to modern day video games, but you gotta imagine this is it. There's, there's nothing else at this point to compare it to except this game. If a boulder strikes your opponent's soldier, they'll go off to the nearest off-screen off first aid station. Okay, this looks pretty self-explanatory. We'll refer back to the manual. If we need to, let's pop it in. This is Stone Sling for the Phyllis Video Pack released at some point in 1980. Oh, great. We got the artwork on the outside as well. So I hope this is only controlled with the controller, which is down in the bottom left corner, similar to Atari, one stick, one button. And on the console, we'll push number one. Cool. Wow. That's the artwork we get. Okay, so I have two controllers plugged in right now, and I'm going to move my controller back and fire. Nice. So cool. Okay, so I'm right here on the far right of the screen. And if I take the other controller and hold the joystick back and then let release. Nice. And then you can adjust the, I guess, the trajectory. It's not giving me any indication of where it's going to go. Yeah, I see. So you don't have anything visually telling you what's different. You just have to use the joystick. So if, if, I, if I move my joystick differently and fire. Yeah, we're knocking down the wall first and it goes back and forth, but so incredible with the artwork. The game that looks this good, it reminds me of an Intellivision game. Look at that. <laughs> so you can't see on the catapult what the difference is, but you just have to, yeah, see, I can just tear my own wall down. <laughs> Messing around this one. Okay, this would be a blast to play with two people. Because it's essentially you, you make an adjustment with your joystick and you realize, oh, it wasn't what I wanted to do. And you, you, you make a, a quick adjustment the next time and you realize how you can make changes. See, I can. <laughs> and that's me holding it down a very, very long time. So you have to time how it's being held down. And I know someone and someone in the chat is going to say this is like the the first Angry Birds. And yeah, it's uh, Angry Birds is a, a modern day artillery game. Yeah, that's it. 
Boom! <laughs> it is a excellent strategy game. Uh, artillery is a, the, the genre of game, and I thought that was the first one to have it. And so it's surprising to see these games like uh, the Cannonball. Will it make it? No, it's way too far. Human Cannonball on the Atari 2600. But the uh, presentation of this is so cool. Let me just do a quick check of the manual and see if we have other versions for it. Or this is the game of Smithereens. Yeah, that, that's, this is it. So uh, it shows the point value of what you get for destroying a castle, hitting a soldier, demolishing the catapult. Oh, the catapult is the way to go. That's what that, you get the most points for that. Sweet. So it has to be played with two people. You cannot have a computer that plays against you. I wouldn't want a computer to play against me. It'd be too difficult. Yeah, uh, this is... Uh, this is so many colors on screen that the only thing that compared to this is the Intellivision. And right now, the console war is really between Intellivision and Atari. But we do have the Mag Mag Magnavox Odyssey 2 that's also contending. And this is the Philips Video Pack. It's essentially the same system, but in Europe. And they had different models uh, th than just the Magnavox Odyssey 2. So cool. So uh, a two-player strategy game uh, artillery style game that is awesome and for the time considering everything else we played and interesting the screenshot doesn't have all the same artwork over on this side i wonder because i was running on a different version so let's take a look uh for star rating i'm gonna go that is a e excellent game to play for the time um four stars don't know if i can go higher I'd love to see it, but no, four, we'll go four stars for Stone Sling. It's not in the, like, best game we've ever played on the channel or something that's pushing the video game industry, but it is an excellent game. Very good. All right, that's four stars for Stone Sling. And we are still in 1980. With that, uh, we will continue playing all the releases at some point in 1980 in alphabetical order. Thanks again for all the shout-outs and any games that you... I want to throw my way to make sure we see or capture on the episode uh, on the stream before we finish 1980 would be much appreciated. Until then, we will catch you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if you miss any games along the way. This video would not be possible without RetroArch and LaunchBox. Please tell your friends there's some crazy guy out there trying to play every single video game. You can always check out Chronologically Gaming on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We will catch you next time.